Hello, I'm going to try to be brief in this video. I just want to show you um, uh, for the trapezoid problem, which we uh, we took as a mini quiz in class. I just wanted to share with you um, uh, how to uh, how to write your de or your statements of understanding to truly demonstrate understanding rather than to just you know put down something to avoid getting in trouble. Um, so the first thing I'll point out here is that um, I constructed a graph based on um, the, the given situation and based on what's reasonable within the context. My graph goes all the way to negative 50 because if x were a negative number, we would bring these um, side lines, uh, these lateral sides, we'd bring them inside the trapezoid and we would have basically what looks like a upside down trapezoid, if you will. So um, we can include negative numbers all the way up to negative 50. The reason negative 50 is our cutoff is because uh, since the middle base or the bottom base um, is 100 long to start with, uh, if we go 50 in this way and 50 in that way, we're going to meet up in the middle and form a triangle by the time x is negative 50. That's neither here nor there. If you just had uh, x being positive only, that's acceptable in this particular case because you're still new with this high-level math stuff. Um, but uh, anyway, just to let you know why I had some negative and why it matters. Incidentally, to answer the first question, all I have to write down is a of 45 equals, and I'll take the given equation and put 45 everywhere I saw an x. Now, a good thing to do would be to take a calculator and figure out all these values and get a number, but to get this number that I got, I went to my calculator and I used the value function on the calculator. I saw where it is on the graph, and I labeled it. So what do we write down? We're going to write down uh, what would we do if we didn't have a calculator, start it out, and then now that we have a calculator, skip to the end and show me where it is on the graph. That's all the basic requirements. Now to demonstrate understanding, um, the, the way that most people have been doing this is saying uh, if x equals 45 uh, centimeters, then the area of the trapezoid would be 5,054.5 square centimeters, which is true. Uh, but to demonstrate understanding, what we have to do is try to acknowledge that we're dealing with a trapezoid here and talk about the trapezoid. In other words, speak in context. So when I say x is 45, what I mean is the second base is going to be 190 centimeters. That's 45 on either side of the 100 that we started with. That's going to create a trapezoid that looks something like this. And so to make my statement of understanding, I'm saying x equals 45 will make a trapezoid who covers an area of around 5,700 square centimeters. We have the exact value up here, so talk in normal English down in our statement of understanding. What I need you guys to understand is the picture says a whole lot more about your comprehension of the problem than any words could. So be efficient and use figures in geometry whenever those are available. On to part B, I'm asked uh, to find uh, A of X equals 6,300. What's the minimum to write down? 6,300 equals an expression with a bunch of X's in it. My goal is to solve that equation. I do not possess the algebra skills to solve this equation. Um, well, I do, but you probably don't. Um, and even if I tried, it would actually end up being a big giant mess and I'd go to a calculator anyway. So let's cut to the chase. The calculator answer will be found by finding intersection where Y equals 6,300. We find two intersections available, and so I write down my solutions. These are the two values for X that will make this equation true. So remember, when you're asked to solve an equation, what we're looking for is value for the variables that make the equation true. So these are two numbers for X that make this true. I didn't write this down, but if you really had the time and you wanted to verify, you could put one of these numbers in for x in both spots and to show that the end result is near 6,300. These are both rounded, so I'm not going to get exactly 6,300. On for, for, to understanding, what we have to do here is to in, indicate that I can appreciate why there are two solutions. So not just give me two solutions because the graph says there are two solutions, but interpret the fact that there are two solutions creates two unique trapezoids, both of which have the same area of 6,300. So by drawing the picture, once again, and labeling the bases according to what the bases should be, um, I can actually make a statement of understanding that's far more profound, uh, one taller and one wider based on the two different numbers that I gave. So the better you draw these pictures and the better you make your statement of understanding, um, the easier it'll be for me to say, oh, they're not just <clears throat> plugging in numbers, they're actually understanding what the math is trying to tell them. Um, so similarly, uh, for this last one, um, Whenever I ask for a maximum or minimum, um, at minimum, I definitely want to see function notation. So you state maximum or minimum, and then write in function notation, and after that, then we can make our interpretation. So once again, in this case, I use a picture to make my interpretation, and I say the largest trapezoid has a base of 148.48 centimeters because the x is equal to 24.4. And now here, I'm going way above and beyond and recalling the formula for the area of a trapezoid. <clears throat> area of a trapezoid, 
um, is going to be half base one plus base two times height. I know the base one, I know the base two, I know the total area, so I can do my algebra and solve for height, and it turns out in this case height is going to be around 54.89. So um, this tells me that not only do I understand where the maximum um, trapezoid is going to exist, but I even know how tall it's going to be relative to the other lengths in this, in this problem. So I hope you find this helpful, um, and have a good day, and good luck on the test.